Hello again, everyone. Edwin Leonard back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be talking about the natal chart of Dr. Phil uh, McGraw. Many of you may know uh, Dr. Phil McGraw, otherwise known as Dr. Phil, is a uh, renowned prolific uh, TV personality. He gives uh, a lot of advice to people that are having difficulties on various issues. He's got you know, the show called Dr. Phil, of course, and the thing... Um, about uh, this is I want to do video on him he wanted because partly what inspired me to do this he had made uh, some controversial statement recently regarding uh, the coronavirus and about he felt that people should uh, be let out basically or the uh, I should say out of their home sooner and, and but what I'm what it really is is not just that it's the fact he wanted he thought the economy should be open up sooner than later and uh, and, and he basically he, he stated that uh, you know, people are going people are going to be let should be let out of their homes in terms of this confinement and these stipulations should be removed uh, sooner than later and I'm gonna do a little you know, talking about his natal chart and I'm gonna look at some transits and it might explain why these uh, statements uh, came about uh, at this time uh, first off, uh, the thing about well, I mean, Dr. Phil, he's somebody, I mean, he made the, the statements regarding uh, the, the coronavirus and stating that people should be let out likely, I mean, really soon, not likely, but sooner, <laughs> sooner than later, I would say immediately is what he really, what he was stating, whether he said it in, in those words or not. Uh, and the thing about it is, he made some statements regarding, well, automobile people, uh, the of excellent people dying from swimming pool accidents, whatever, drowning, I guess he was referring to, and uh, automobile accidents. And, uh, and the thing, and, and anyway, uh, and he said, well, but yet we're not uh, confining people because of that or, or what have you. But, uh, but the thing is, uh, or we're not quarantining people because of that. But anyway. What I want to say is, as far as this chart goes, the first thing may I look at is the sun, his sun, moon, and ascendant. And this is a B, I believe, B rating on the astro.com side. I believe it came from like an autobiography of him. Uh, sun in Virgo, Taurus, moon, and Pisces ascendant. Well, having the sun in Virgo, I mean, obviously, there could be a strong focus on his uh, health, on matters pertaining to one's health and and he is shining in matters uh, that it could be perhaps health related, though it's more about mental health is what he really uh, focuses on on his show. But uh, the thing about it is the fact that he's got the Taurus moon, I believe a lot of that energy is in, in really in, injected in a very, very placid, calm uh, manner and energy that he, you notice that he's very calm often when he's talking to his guests on the show. Very good listener. Taurus Moon people, of course, could be very receptive in terms of, of listening to others. And his emotions are like very stable, uh, most, at least mostly. Nobody is ever 100% calm and cool all the time. But he, but he seems to be fairly calm and composed, at least for most of the time when he's doing the show. And flavor with Pisces, uh, uh, Pisces Ascendant, this is about getting uh, a lot of this energy that he is, this, uh, this Virgo, this helpful energy that is connected with the Sun and Virgo may be flavored with a lot of Pisces, like inspiration and altruism and idealism. You notice that he says a lot, I want you to get excited about your life. He wants people to reach their pinnacle and, and to be able to attain their own dr their dreams in their life, I, I believe, and, and, and have them reach their maximum potential. I think a lot of that is attributed to him having a Pisces ascendant. Now, there was one thing that I noticed in his chart that uh, that I mean really stood out to me. Now speaking of controversy, you could say this is like a controversial God configuration because um, the Neptune you could say makes a long. You know, people would say this is a long in conjunct in this configuration, and I'm using the Ascendant as one of the proponents in this configuration. I believe the Ascendant still should be counted. Some people may use it, some may not in the God configuration. Some people just use exclusively planets in it, but I'm going to include the, the Ascendant position now. 
in this yod configuration, okay, uh, Dr. Phil in his chart, he has the Venus, Pluto, and a Leo conjunction uh, making a sextile to his Neptune and Libra, and then both these energies, the Venus, Pluto conjunction, and the Neptune and Libra make the in conjunct aspect to the Pisces ascendant, which of course is that apex point of the configuration. Now, a lot of this, I think, may manifest in uh, the fact he's got these values you're talking about first first breaking down that uh, conjunction with the Venus and Leo conjunctus Pluto that could be that those values into being a dominant, a Leo dominant psychologist, which of course psychology can be connected with Pluto. And of course, blending in with filmography, Neptune can be associated with that. And bringing that in a yacht configuration, it's about bringing that energy incorporating that energy into the uh, the apex point of the configuration, in this case, the Pisces Ascendant. The Pisces Ascendant, of course, can be uh, really about, I mean, this is where he can attain, one could have the apex point of the uh, configuration can potentially be that point where one can attain, uh, make very, uh, really prodigious and monumental achievements if they're able to work through the inconjuncts of the aspect. And of course, the inconjuncts of the aspect are the Neptune in the long inconjunct to the Ascendant and then the, the Venus-Pluto conjunction uh, makes an inconjunct aspect to the Ascendant. But with the, having the Pisces Ascendant, his achievement, his monumental achievement, is where we see his face, his appearance. He is known, I mean, we, we, we talk about you know going for advice. I mean, his face is like really synonymous with that with a lot of people, I believe. But as far as his outer, the, the Ascendant, of course, is the outer demeanor and the qualities that one can project very naturally. And having a Pisces Ascendant, he certainly could be, this is where the, the achievement is him bringing forth these qualities, uh, these Piscean qualities expressed very readily, very outwardly, such as altruism, uh, being all very altruistic, being very inspirational, motivational, uh, inspiring others to greater heights and achievement, his idealism. This is where you can have that very prodigious achievement and this is, uh, and that is how I believe it may man it's manifesting in this case uh, with him. Now, another thing he has, I noticed in his chart, he has Scorpio on uh, the eighth house cusp. So, I mean, that's really the ideal place if you're doing um, psychology. Now, best of my knowledge, he's not licensed right now. He don't have the license to practice it, but I'm sure he's incorporating a lot of what he learned in psychology on the Dr. Phil show. Having Scorpio on the eighth house cusp, this could be somebody that obviously in psychology can have very provocative, very insight, very uh, be very insightful in this area and and in the subject, and really be interested in very deep psychology, being very probing in the process and understanding the psychological reasons behind things. So it tells me this is a point where he could be very proficient in psychology, also has one of the rulers of the eighth house in his eighth house. So that could give really like a double uh, emphasis on this. This could be a person that studies astro another indicator of studying astrology, I'm sorry, studying psychology very uh, deeply, very extensively. And um, this could also be uh, another thing that I, I noticed, he got uh, not just the ruler of the eighth house in the eighth house, but he has the other ruler, Pluto, uh, of the, the other ruler of the eighth house, which is uh, Pluto, is in the sixth house. So it shows that he can incorporate this very well in his daily routine. And of course, Pluto, uh, one of those rulers being in Leo, and it's also conjunct Venus. So it's not surprising he really made a made a prodigious amount of income in doing so, and done so on a celebrity level in attaining notoriety and recognition. I think that's how that Leo energy in this is flavoring. Now, another thing too I notice he has Aquarius okay on the cusp of his uh, of his 12th house in his natal chart and of course this could be about helping others that are less fortunate than yourself and even people with mental illness doing so very altruistically very selflessly doing so 
uh, in a way. Uh, really, we're in, in through television as well because Aquarius can be associated with this. He also has uh, he has Jupiter in its dignity in Pisces in that 12th house as well. So it tells me that this is where he could be very lucky and fortunate by being by by showing idealism and and, and really in being inspirational. In helping others that are less fortunate than themselves, even the mentally ill, those are the kind of people. That, that is how he could be very. That is where this is very fortuitous uh, for him. Hold on a moment, people. Anyway, now what I wanted to say, there was something, but the thing what I want to talk about. Now, too, is that as far as these, the statement uh, that he made, he, I think with these statements with, with Dr. Phil, the reason he was so, it seemed like chastised by the media for what he said, it wasn't really, it may not have even been so much what he said, but how it was presented and you know, people, you might have come across to some people as being very cold and callous regarding uh, these statements. But it's not like, I don't know if they're completely preposterous or outlandish because he, uh, Dr. Phil is basically saying, I think in his own way, is that you could have more, you could have people, if, if you're keeping the economy closed for a protracted period, for a longer period due to the coronavirus, could there be more people that may die as a result of that as opposed to reopening it and uh, and, and, and really in, in people being affected by the coronavirus. In other words, I think what he was basically, he, he was stating that he felt perhaps that there were more people would actually die as a result of the economy being closed as opposed to it opening because you could have more deaths that might come from other things such as malnutrition, hunger. And what people don't realize too, there's also another element in it, the fact that when you keep the economy closed for a prolonged period, you may have more people that are not being compensated through unemployment or what have you. What happens when they can't pay their homes or they don't have the money to afford it? And if they got it, they got to hit the streets. What happens then? Could they be more susceptible to criminal activity? Could they be shot more greater uh, propensity of being shot and being killed? Uh, th those are some things that people really have to look at. That there's a lot. This is not really such a. I don't know if it's such a black and white issue as a lot of people make it out to be. But anyway, what I wanted to add. As far as the transits go and the statements to me, one thing that stood out, of course, to me was that you had the transit uh, Mercury uh, in Aries at this time uh, taking place. And, and when he made these statements around April, on or around April 16, 2020, he had the transit uh, in his intercepted first house in the chart. And when, when transit, when you have transit Mercury in Aries by itself, people can be a little bit more abrupt, more spontaneous, more outspoken and direct with what they're going to say uh, to others. And the, and the feelings might not be really taken into consideration as much. And when you have transits that are hitting an intercept in your chart, they could be a little bit more exasperated, a little bit more tension connected with it, more taxing. And uh, the fact is uh, one of the uh, on, uh, one of the uh, adverse aspects that made to his points in his chart at the time it did square his natal Uranus squaring Uranus of course you have transit Mercury squaring Uranus these are statements that could come out that uh, might surprise or shock others to see uh, say the very least interestingly enough the point that it squared Uranus he has Uranus and cancer and uh, this could be some unusual uh, thought, maybe some unusual uh, thoughts regarding matters connected uh, with the home. It's no surprise he is more in favor of people as far as their freedom, as far as from maybe from their home life. Where it's Uranus and Cancer may manis, manifest in some cases of about really people that are emphasizing freedom in terms of their home life, uh, maybe to some degree. And and there might be some shocking viewpoints that are associated with this. The fact that transit Mercury was squaring at Uranus again, that could be very shocking, surprising communications uh, on his part. And one, and of course, being an Aries, that was very direct, that was very abrupt and outspoken. Um, the thing about 
And two was he also had the transit Mercury in Aries was making an in conjunct aspect to his uh, to his natal sun. And, and the significance in that is when you're talking about uh, in conjuncts, whether they're in transits or natally, they could be about adjustments. The transit Mercury in Aries in conjuncting uh, the natal uh, sun in Virgo could it could show too much of one or the other. It could show. I mean, in one case, I mean Mercury in Aries can show. Too too much on direct spontaneous communications without really say going over any agonizing details and I think what it was is this might have offended uh, some people because maybe he didn't focus the fact that it was in conjunct his son in Virgo maybe he wasn't focusing on the details and on the health aspect of this as much as people thought he should have when uh, when this statement uh, was made and uh, the thing about this too is uh, now it's interestingly enough at this point not at the time he made the statements but at this point in time of the video I'm making he has transit so transit Sun and Taurus is making an in conjunct aspect to his natal Mercury and Libra and again that's another uh, adjustment kind of uh, aspect this could show and be an indicator or having the Sun transiting Taurus maybe there's too much of a focus uh, and attention on the monetary element of something on the economical situation uh, in conjunct the Mercury and Libra uh, Mercury and sorry Mercury and Libra in contrast to maybe not thinking about the social element of it, the social distancing in this particular um, as far as this goes now uh, another thing I noticed too he's got Saturn and Virgo making a very tight opposition to his natal Pisces ascendant Saturn I mean natal in his natal chart Saturn and Virgo opposes his Pisces ascendant and when you have that this could manifest I believe in some cases as authority people that are an authority perhaps on health related matters are opposing what he's projecting outwardly and people may be these people may be seen and um, that is him maybe being a little bit unrealistic or not seen all being pun overly punctilious with details which is ironic him having a son uh, in Virgo now the thing is too uh, what I wanted to basically what I wanted to close with is that I wanted to also say that Excuse me. I mean, Dr. Phil is obviously very proficient in what he does. I'm sure he takes a lot of precautions health-wise, but he does have certain uh, susceptibility to this coronavirus. I thought was interesting is that transit Neptune uh, is very close to his natal Pisces ascendant. I mean, Pisces ascendant by itself can be more vulnerable and susceptible to the coronavirus than most people because remember, and keep in mind, water signs in general collectively, as far as their immune their resistance is not strong to um, to uh, diseases Pisces is associated with diseases that can't be eradicated or cured when you have transit Neptune on your on your ascendant you could be more susceptible to something affecting the physical vitality uh, the physical body which could be associated with a disease and being Neptune and Pisces a disease that can't be eradicated or cured it could also show the dissipation or dissolving of the physical body the health at this time and Dr. Phil is nearly 70 years old you have got to factor that into the equation as well also I noticed uh, in his chart he also has in his natal chart uh, Pluto makes uh, an in Pluto in the sixth house of health makes an in conjunct aspect to his Pisces ascendant when you have in, con in conjuncts in astrology can often be about health related issues this could be about and remember Pluto can be associated with viruses so he is more susceptible to becoming debilitated due to a virus and it could be in a way being in Leo well you could say in a dramatic way but in a way also that might be grabbed more attention because he is of celebrity status a person of notoriety so and also to top this off he has Neptune 
in his natal chart that makes a long in conjunct aspect to his Pisces ascendant and Neptune is associated with uh, with with diseases so these are some things that you have that are very uh, important to look at as far as his uh, I mean as far as him and certain susceptibility to it remember nobody's impervious to this or invincible to this disease not even uh, celebrities and obviously and those and, and the thing also is another transit I notice he has transit Chiron in his first house right now of the physical body intercepted remember that that Chiron and Aries you're talking about Chiron and astrology can be associated with certain with suffering that those kind of emotional ones but they can be physical as well so and, and Aries can be associated uh, with with headaches with fever and I believe fever can be associated with this I'm not 100% sure on the headaches but you might want to confirm that and look that up but as far as Chiron and Aries goes he can be susceptible to that as far as that transit in this first house at this point in time so those are some things uh, to look at uh, right now in, in, in any way people well that will conclude this YouTube astrological segment until next time people and we learn saying stay well